It's an early spring morning in a forest in Oregon. This forest holds a frozen secret that only reveals itself for a short time when the conditions are just right. There are broadleaf trees here, alders. In death, they hold the key to this hidden wonder. During the night, the air temperature dropped just below freezing, but the forest floor did not. The ground is wet, soaked through like a sponge. But only a few inches above, frost covers the plants in a sparkling dust. In many places, there are tiny ice crystals that seem to have grown from the soil. Fragile swords pushing up specks of dirt. This is needle ice, and it can be found across the planet. Though delicate and temporary, there's a much rarer ice formation to be seen here, growing from dead wood. Across the forest floor, small white puffs sprout from decomposing branches. Feathery blooms of thin ice grown overnight. This is hair ice, and it's the only type of ice on Earth that's caused by a fungus. In the winter of 1916, the German scientist Alfred Wegener, who had just published his theory on continental drift, observed hair ice in the forests of France and Germany. He noticed that every icy blossom grew on wood colonized by fungi. In 1918, he published the first scientific paper on hair ice, theorizing that a fungus was the catalyst for these rare formations. In 2015, a team of German and Swiss scientists at the University of Bern in Switzerland confirmed what Wegener had proposed nearly a century before. Though many types of fungus can be found in the wood from which it grows, through their research they found that all hair ice is caused by a single species, Exodiopsis effusa. This fungus affects the water in the dead wood, allowing ice crystals to grow in one direction instead of recrystallizing into a crust of ice on the wood surface. The complex relationship between ice and fungus is not yet fully understood, but a theory is that by dissolving parts of the wood, the fungus leaves behind a partial antifreeze solution, preventing the tiny ice hairs from quickly recrystallizing and freezing together. Under the same conditions, if the fungus is killed or not present, dead wood will produce a surface crust of ice or no ice at all. So we know that Exodiopsis effusa must be present and living to produce hair ice. In this forest, the fungus feasts on alder wood, but elsewhere it may live on beech trees, oak, or other broadleaf species. Not all hair ice grows on the ground, and some may sprout from still standing trees slowly decomposing. Nearly all specimens of Exodiopsis effusa are found at latitudes between 45 to 55 degrees north. And so this is also the global range of hair ice. Hair ice and frost are intimately linked, and conditions for frost must be present for hair ice to reveal itself. Although frost is required for their formation, these ice crystals are not a type of frost. Frost condenses out of the air, whereas the water that forms this ice comes from inside the soaked dead wood and freezes as it leaves the warm interior. This process, 
called ice segregation produces many kinds of natural ice formations, including needle ice from the ground, frost flowers from plant stems, and hair ice on a fusa colonized wood. Very specific conditions are required for ice segregation, and it only takes place where above freezing and below freezing temperatures meet at a porous, water-saturated surface. For crystals to form, the air temperature must drop to just below freezing, and the ground must be wet and retain enough heat to stay unfrozen. If the air is too cold, the ground will freeze, and if there's not enough humidity, the ice will quickly sublimate into the air. As the cold creeps in, a delicate balance of temperature takes place. A tiny frost crystal from the air is required to start the process, crystallizing the supercooled surface water into ice. Once the first crystals form, capillary action takes over, drawing liquid water through the wood rays and out to the surface where temperatures are below freezing. The tiny wood rays, which act like the veins of the tree, can be as small as one one hundredth of a millimeter and are responsible for the size and shape of these gossamer ice threads. Upon reaching the mouth of the wood ray, the water contacts the bottom of the ice hair, freezing and expanding outwards, growing the hair ice into frozen tufts. crystalline shaggy manes. and ornately embellished silken blossoms. The morning light, which will soon erase these formations, first glitters through their icy fibers. Ten times thinner than human hair, Together the strands curve and curl, their path designated by the balance of heat transfer and air temperature. The hairs bend towards heat as they grow, with endless variation created by the flowing night air. As the sun rises and the air temperature warms, the hair ice is not long for this world. Though it may survive for several hours if conditions are stable, as time passes, its dripping demise is inescapable. So fragile it can be erased with just a breath. Inevitably, this ice will melt but in doing so, it reveals a final clue to its origins. As the delicate strands liquefy in the sunlight, some of the melting hairs reveal drops on microscopic threads, which look much like spider webs. These short-lived micro-threads may contain the mystery substance that prevents ice recrystallization. Exactly how is still unknown, 
but an analysis of melted hair ice reveals a complex spectrum of lignin and tannins from the wood. Soon the resplendent blooms of hair ice will be only memories, leaving behind melt water and bare branches with no trace of the brilliant luster they recently bore. The early morning thermal equilibrium has ceased as the forest begins its day. Its icy secrets disguised once again as forest debris, tucked safely away in mossy pockets and decomposing trunks. Until yet another barely freezing night arrives to extract its concealed crystalline treasures.